Robert Snow by Grace Lynn. Robert Snow by Grace Lynn. Robert and his family lived in a house that looked a bit like a shoe. Really, it was a boot, but Grandpa had made a lot of changes to it. The good thing about being small, Grandpa said to Robert, is that it's easy to find things to patch the house with. Our poor house, every day it needs something. Oh, well, what can you expect? It's a pretty old boot. And it was a very old boot. The roof would leak and the kitchen would flood and the walls would crack. Maybe we should look for a new home, Aunt Vicky sighed. But when would they ever be able to find a new home before winter? For winter was always the worry. There had to be enough nuts and berries, firewood, blankets, and bedding, and all of it had to be gathered and stored. There was never enough time to look for a new house. Right before the first snow, Robert's family sealed the windows and the door shut. We're not going to go outside anyway, Mom told Robert, so we might as well seal everything to keep the snow out. When the snow came, it covered the toe of the boot first, then the heel, and then the ankle. Slowly, the whole boot was wrapped in snow. The door was blocked and all the windows were filled, except for one. That window belonged to Robert, who lived in the smallest room, because he was the smallest mouse, on the highest floor. Too much snow, Grandpa grumbled as the wind struck. Too wet, too cold. Is it? Robert asked. Robert had never touched snow. I want to see. There's nothing to see, Aunt Vicky scoffled. Snow is just trouble. For big animals, Grandma said, snow's no problem. They just stomp, stomp right through it. For small animals like us, well, if we go out there, we'd be lost in two seconds. Small animals like us, Mom said, don't like snow. I like snow, Robert said to himself one night while he gazed out the window. The rest of the family was sound asleep as Robert watched the snow float from the night sky. I wish I could go out in the snow, Robert whispered to one particularly bright star. Swish! Crack! A strong gust of wind burst through Robert's window and pushed him across the room. Robert looked up in a daze. The seal was broken! Robert ran to the window and stuck out his head. He felt a snowflake fall. Whiteness sparkled in front of him. Robert stretched his head out farther, breathing in the fresh coldness. The soft, chilly breeze whispered to him, inviting him out. Robert reached out a little more, and then a little more after that, and... Whoops! Robert slipped. Out the window, Robert fell down, down, down into the snow. Robert sat up. Soft coldness was all around him. I'm in the snow, Robert gasped in disbelief. I'm in the snow, joy bubbled through him, and he burst into laughter. Snowflakes fell all around him. It was an incredible thing. I love snow, Robert hugged the air. Mom and Grandpa and everyone is so silly. Snow is wonderful. Do you guys like the snow? But as Robert turned back to go home, a fair froze his heart. Where was the house? All this, all he saw was whiteness and wind. Robert remembered that, after all, he was a small animal. And two small animals, snow was not wonderful. Snow was scary. What should I do? Robert whispered, but no one answered. The wind howled and the snow flew at him. Robert shivered. White, white, all around him was whiteness. And wait, red? Something red was in the snow. Robert squinted through the snowflakes. It was one of the big animals, one with red fur, and it was coming toward him. I have to hide, Robert panicked. It's coming! He dug himself into the snow. His heart raced as he lay as still as he could underneath the snow. He could hear the big animal coming, thump, thump. With any luck, the big animal wouldn't notice something as small as Robert. Poor Robert. In his haste to hide, he forgot to cover his tail. The big animal stooped down and pulled Robert up, up, up out of the snow. It held Robert in the air and looked at him. The big animal wasn't all red after all. It had red and white fur and big blue eyes, but it also had big teeth. Because suddenly the animal opened his mouth and made a noise like thunder. Help! Robert screamed and covered his face with his hands. 
Robert felt himself being carried. He peeked through his fingers and saw the ground far below. It made him feel dizzy. Where was the big animal taking him? Then Robert saw his house, the old boot, half covered with snow and with his window wide open. Home, Robert whispered hopefully. The big hand lowered him to his window and Robert jumped off. His room was so nice and warm, so safe and small. Robert ran to his bed and hugged his toys and his favorite blanket. Then he remembered the big animal. Carefully, Robert poked his head out the window. The big animal was leaving. Thanks for bringing me back home, Robert squeaked. The animal waved goodbye and walked away. Robert watched until Red disappeared into the whiteness of the falling snow. That spring, when the snow melted away, Robert's family finally unsealed the door. Thank goodness the snow is gone, Mom said. Now begins the endless repairs on the home, Grandpa sighed. But when he stepped outside, he stopped in shock. By golly, Grandpa said. What? What? The rest of the family asked as they scrambled outside to join him. What do you think it is? Right next to their home was a brand new boot, strong, snug, and big enough for the whole family. It was a new home waiting for them. How on earth did it get here, Grandma wondered. No one knew the answer. How do you think the boot got there? But Robert could guess. The end.